One sunny afternoon, my friends and I were playing in the park when we heard a spooky story from Tommy, the older boy in our neighborhood. Tommy said, have you heard about the haunted house on Elm Street? They say it's full of ghosts and strange noises. We all gasped and gathered around Tommy, eager to hear more. Tell us, Tommy. What's the story? Tommy continued, legend has it that the house belonged to the old Mr. Johnson, who disappeared many years ago. Some say he's haunting the place. We exchanged nervous glances but couldn't resist the mystery. Sarah, Michael, Emily, and I decided to investigate the haunted house ourselves. That evening, we gathered at the front gate of the spooky house. The moon was full, and the wind rustled the leaves in the trees. I said, we have to be brave, like real detectives. We nodded, determined to uncover the truth. With flashlights in hand, we crept up to the front door. It creaked open slowly as we entered the dark and dusty hallway. The air felt chilly, and we heard strange noises coming from different rooms. Our hearts raced, but we pressed on. We explored the old living room, where cobwebs hung from the ceiling, and dusty furniture lay covered with sheets. Sarah said, this place gives me the creeps. We all agreed but continued our search for clues. As we moved through the house, we heard faint whispers and saw flickering lights. We thought we saw shadows moving in the corners of our eyes. Michael said, maybe it's just our imaginations playing tricks on us. We tried to stay brave. In one room, we found a collection of old books and journals belonging to Mr. Johnson. Emily carefully flipped through the pages. She said, these journals might have clues about what happened to him. We decided to take them with us to investigate further. As we continued exploring, we heard a loud thud coming from the basement. Our flashlights pointed toward the basement door. Emily gulped and said, we have to check it out. We took a deep breath and slowly descended the creaky stairs. In the dimly lit basement, we found an old chest covered in dust. With trembling hands, we opened it and gasped at what we saw inside. It was a collection of old photographs, letters, and a diary. The diary belonged to Mr. Johnson and contained his last entries. We read about his loneliness and sadness after his family moved away. He wrote about strange occurrences in the house, like objects moving on their own. Suddenly, we heard a loud noise from upstairs, like footsteps approaching. We panicked and hurried back to the main floor. As we reached the hallway, we saw a shadowy figure at the end of the corridor. It was Mr. Johnson, dressed in old-fashioned clothes, and he looked sad. We were scared but also curious. Sarah asked, Mr. Johnson, what happened to you? He began to speak, telling us how he had been searching for his family all these years and how he had been trapped in the house. We felt sorry for him and wanted to help. Emily said, maybe we can find your family and reunite you. Mr. Johnson's face brightened, and he nodded in agreement. He showed us a hidden passage in the house that led to an old attic. In the attic, we found a collection of letters Mr. Johnson had written to his family but never sent. We decided to track down his descendants. With the information from the letters, we started our search. It took some time, but we eventually found Mr. Johnson's great-grandchildren. They were surprised to learn about their long-lost relative and decided to visit the haunted house. When they arrived, there was a tearful reunion. Mr. Johnson finally found peace, knowing that his family had not forgotten him. The haunted house on Elm Street was no longer haunted. It became a place filled with love, memories, and the laughter of family. 
As for us, we had solved the mystery of the haunted house and made a new friend in Mr. Johnson's ghost. And that's the story of the mystery of the haunted house. It taught us that sometimes, things are not as scary as they seem and that even the spookiest places can hold heartwarming surprises.